practically ready to go. So please come and stand with your toes together, your heels together. You pull up on your thighs, your tummy's tight. Interlock your fingers right down to the webbing. All of your knuckles are underneath your chin. Relax your shoulders away from your ears. And let's begin. Inhale, go on, inhale. So as you inhale, float your elbows all the way up to the ceiling, forearms from your beautiful face. Now open your mouth and let your head go back. As your head goes back, keep your spine straight. Tummy's nice and tight, shoulders away from your ears and squeeze your elbows together. And again, you inhale your pranayama. And I have to say, Katya, your body, your form, how you look is absolutely exceptional, baby girl. One more breath at the top. And then again, you let it go. And as you let it go, your spine is so straight. Your eyes are really wide open, relax them and bring your wrist and your elbows and you squeeze them together really, really high. And again, inhale your prana. And as you inhale the prana, get the weight back in the heels, the chin is down. Inhale a little bit more, a little bit more, one more breath at the top. And again, would you let it go and your spine is so straight and your eyes are wide open and you look along the ceiling, you relax the shoulders completely and please squeeze your elbows together and another inhale, your pranayama. And as you inhale, you get the weight back in the heels and your chin is down. Hey, Seppi, inhale one more beautiful breath at the top. And again, would you let it go? And your spine is straight and your eyes are open and you look along the ceiling, relax them and please, would you bring your elbows and you squeeze them together. And again, you inhale your pranayama. And as you inhale, gorgeous mother, where you immediately open up the elbows and you float your elbows up as you inhale one more beautiful breath at the top. And again, you let it go. And this is your last one. As you relax the shoulders and please, would you bring your elbows together to squeeze up at the end? Excellent. You let your arms float down by your side and you breathe. Okay, guys, second set. Toes together, heels together, pull up on your thighs, your tummy's tight. Interlock your fingers, knuckles underneath your chin, relax your shoulders. And let's begin. Inhale for one and two and three and four and five and six at the top. Exhale for six and five and four and three and bring your elbows together now again inhale when you inhale lengthen up in the spine your chin is down you're looking forward at your exquisite form and you keep inhaling a little bit more one more gorgeous breath at the top and then again you let it go and when you let it go, open your eyes, open your mouth, spine is straight, relax your throat back, opening your throat chakra, and you bring your elbows and you squeeze them together so high. And again, you inhale your pranayama. So all that work you've been doing, Amber, you know, on the opening of the front part of your body, it was your throat chakra you were opening. One more breath. And again, you let it go and your spine is so straight. And when you open your throat chakra, this is, you actually open your communication, how you communicate this class, how you communicate with other people as you relax your shoulders and you squeeze your elbows together. And again, you inhale. Because obviously the throat chakra, what does it hold? It holds your voice box. And you inhale more, a little bit more. And most of us communicate with our voice box. So you inhale one more breath at the top. And then you look along the ceiling at your head, go back. Open your eyes, open your mouth, relax in the shoulders, and please bring your elbows, squeeze them together so high. And again, you inhale your prana. And as you start to open the different vertebrae, you know, in your body, as you start to open the spine, as you inhale one more breath at the top, and again, you let it go. You're activating the different chakras, you know, as you relax the shoulders and you bring your elbows and you squeeze them together so high. And again, you inhale your pranayama. My throat chakra wasn't the problem with me. It was that base chakra, that red hot, you know, the base chakra. That was very, very hard for me to handle opening. As you inhale one more breath at the top, and again, you let it go. And the heart chakra is obviously the one that we are working to open. And you see how many postures push our heart up to the ceiling, relax the shoulders, squeeze your elbows together. And here's your last one, inhale. Chin down as you inhale. A little bit more, a little bit more. One more fabulous breath at the top. Let it go. The spine is straight, 
Your eyes are open, you look along the ceiling, relax the shoulders, and please, would you bring your elbows together to squeeze up at the end? Excellent. Let your arms just float down by your side and you breathe. You are on your magic carpet. You're already in transformation with the breath. Ardit and Drasna half moon pose with Padasasana hand to feet bows, please. Inhale your arms, roll your head. Interlock your fingers, release your index finger, glue your wrists together, straight elbows, straight knees, reach up, touch the ceiling. Start to stretch your body from side to side. For three, two, one. Please come, stop in the middle. Now get the weight back in the heels, suck your tummy tight, bum, straight elbows, guys, straight knees, my beloveds, reach up, touch the ceiling. And now please rainbow over in a perfectly straight line towards the right hand side of the room. And you breathe. Your chin is up, your arms are back, you suck in your tummy, that kit is gorgeous, and you straighten your elbows and you straighten your knees, and you breathe. Do you know something, Katia? I think you should get somebody, maybe your husband in an outfit like that you've got, to take some beautiful pictures of you, my darling. As you begin to push, or anybody you know that can take some incredible pictures of you, my darling, as you very, very gently push your right hip over your right ankle, and then you begin to feel the stretch, and you begin to feel the opening, down the whole of the right hand side of your bodies. Get your left armpit forward, right armpit forward, and your chin is up and your arms are back. And then bring your left hip forward. So you're in a perfectly straight line as if you could come down between two very skinny panes of glass. Now, how much more have we got? Only nine seconds, guys. So pull your tummy muscles in, it's gorgeous, Barbie. Push your right hip, left hip a little bit over your left ankle. There you go, Chrissy. Three, two, done. And then you breathe up very, very long. Straighten your elbows, straighten your knees, reach up as high as you can, and oh, you rainbow in a perfectly straight line towards the left-hand side of the space, and you breathe. The shape is gorgeous, Wayne. The shoulders away from your ears. You're sucking your tummy. You straighten out your elbows. You straighten out your knees, and you breathe, and very gently, very gently invite your right hip over your right ankle until you feel that gorgeous sensation. I've got goose pimples and stretching over the whole of the right-hand side of your body, stunning cat here, my Lily, left armpit forward a little bit towards me, my Aileen, just your left armpit forward, yes baby, and now you're right in perfect Aileen and your legs are gorgeous, so you're sucking your tummy and you're pushing your hip over your ankle, just a little bit more with Wayne, just a little bit more, yes Barbie, as you come down for three and two and down and then you breathe up, okay, hips and tummy, thighs forward, please lift your chest up and drop your head back, the first gorgeous back bend of your day. You know they heal your back, you know they know back bends, you know back bends change you. Lift your chest up, drop your eyes back. You probably shook out your neck a little bit. Now lift your chest up again and begin to take your arms back and try to get them to where your ears are. That's it, Amber. When you're opening your arms to where your ears are, Amber, it's directly connecting with your throat chakra. And keep pumping your heart up. Remember the heart's going up and you're floating back. You're dripping back from your heart back. Go back, breathe back. Yes, Chrissy. And hips and tummy thighs forward. Gorgeous, Shahida. As you lift your chest up and even go back. Now relax and go back with the relaxation. Go back and breathe back. Yes, Wayne. One more breath. <laughs> Inhale as you come up long. Suck in your tummy. Bend your knees. And please come down with a straight back and get your hands on the floor and do your little upside down. Cha-cha-cha. As you ease out your back, as you warm up your spine, wiggling a bit, feel it so it's juicy, relaxing. That lovely feeling. Always pay attention to the lower back. See how it feels. Okay. Please bend your knees a lot, lay your belly on your thighs, lay your chest on the knees, reach around and grab your heels from behind. Step on all of your fingers and your thumb. Get all your fingers to face the same direction as your toes and then reach around with your elbows. Try to get your elbows behind the calf muscles. Get the weight into the toes, lift your hips up into the air, drop the shoulders away from your ears and please begin to pull. Get the weight forward again, guys. Contract your thigh muscles. Lift your hips up into the air. Keep on pulling. One more breath. Inhale, breathing. And come up with the straightest back that 
you arms with your ears arms with your ears is the correct way to come up not arms out to the side but from that posture you bring your arms with your ears and come up let your arms float down take a breath let go and breathe also something i said because i missed it when people perhaps didn't do that but arms with your ears when you come up let's do it again inhale your arms above your head interlock your fingers release your index finger straight elbow straight knees reach up as high as you possibly can and now rainbow over in a perfect and straight line now to get your hips over your left ankle you're going to feel the inside of your right foot a strength there to push and the outside of your left foot to push your hips a little bit more that's it yes aileen rock and bloody roll baby girl yes chrissy Feel the strength in there. The hold the foot still on the ground, but you know where, where you're inferring it. And push a little bit more. Did I say the right? I think I said the right one. Yes, the left hand side, you're pushing a little bit more. Hold the left hand side of the foot. And the inside of the right hand foot is helping to push a little bit more. And your chin is up and your arms are back. You suck your tummy, you tighten your bum. You straighten your elbows, you straighten your knees as you breathe. Go for your breath. Everybody's posture is stunning. Yes, Ma. Go for your breath. Slow it down. Feed your body with prana. Feel your body with life force. Feed your body with awareness right now that you're in the posture. Three, two, done. Breathe up. Feeding your body with awareness is the deepest of all. Remembering that you're here. Straight elbow, straight knees, reach up, touch the ceiling. And over you go in a perfectly straight line towards the left-hand side of the room and you breathe. A right side, yeah, go to the left. <laughs> Opening up now the whole of the right-hand side of your body. So push that way. You know which parts of the feet are going to push that way. And it's still just going to be the whole foot on the floor. But I'm just finding if I push that way, yeah, then I begin to find the opening and the stretching. Yes, Lily. And then you get that banana curve. Push your hips a little bit more, Shahida. The upper body's all the way down, but the lower body's not in equal balance. So push them a little bit more. Yes, Shahida. That's where it lives, my baby. And straighten your elbows and straighten your knees. So you keep pushing back. The other body is going to completely do what he wants to because it's always done it. So you encourage those hips a little bit more and the stretch from your knees. I Shahid all go through that hip. You know that hip? That's where we're going for. That little part of the hip, Shahida, that's where you're pushing for. As you come down, five gorgeous baby girl, push it a little bit more for three and two and done. And breathe up long. And remember, we all saw on this side of us a little bit. That's where it is. Where are you going to heal it completely? Hips and tummy, thighs forward, lift your chest up and drop your head back. Let your head go. Now hips and tummy, thighs forward, lift your chest up and begin to take your arms back to where your ears are. Hips and tummy, thighs forward, keep on lifting your chest up and you go back and look back. Your back's more warmed up. So why not ask it for a little bit more if it's available to you? So to ask it for a little bit more, where are you going to ask it with? You're going to ask with your eyes and you're going to look further along the wall. And then you're going, fingers are going to try to trace and follow those eyes, follow where the eyes are looking at. And if you're really, really open in the upper body, maybe your fingers are now gone below where you're looking at. And now your eyes have got to try and follow your fingers to look back and go back and look back more back and way back. And open your armpits. Yes, Amber, go back. Please back yes way more back over yes lily and change inhale as you come up suck in your tummy bend your knees and please come down the straight spine and get your hands on the floor and do your cha 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 you're warming up at the back easing up the spine let the head hang allow the blood to instantly gush like a waterfall into your brain and you know when you let the head hang like this the, the blood goes into it quite quickly and it's not being pumped into it. It's just like a waterfall gush into the brain. So the speed of the different um, of the blood as it goes, sometimes we make the blood slow it up. Sometimes we make the blood go fast. The fast blood flushes stuff out. Bend your knees, tummy, your thighs, chest and knees. Reach around and grab your heels from behind. Step on all your fingers and your thumb. Trying to get your fingers face the same direction as your toes. Wrap the elbows around the calf muscles a little bit more. Lift your hips up into the air. Drop the shoulders away from your ears and begin to pull. Get the weight in the toes, begin to pull. Let your forehead, if it's available to you, because your body's so stuck to your legs that you can get your forehead on the shins below the knees. Yes, Amber. Yes, Wayne. Get the weight of the toes, lovely catchy, lift your hips. There you go, my Shahida. Trying to get your armpits glued to your knees. Get the weight in the toes. Fabulous, Chrissy. Pull one more breath. Inhale, breathe in. And come up with a straight spine. Good for you, Amber.
very lovely practice in front of me, guys. Very beautiful practice. Breathe. When you're ready, would you look down at your feet, take a six and step to the right and hide your heels behind your toes. Look stunningly lean. Inhale your arms up to centre and drop your shoulders down deep, away from your ears, find your neck, suck in your tummies. Inhale breathing and sit down in the chair. Do you know, Aileen, what I find is so magical about these postures is how quickly they allow your body to react to them. I mean, I was shocked within three months, the difference in my body. Now, remember, you don't, you want to have the feeling of sitting on a chair and you're trying to make your body the shape of the chair. Now, you've got to reach your fingertips way, way forward so you can sit back a little bit deeper. But I want you to get the back of your chair up. So lift your upper body up. Standing, Katia. That's why your belly looks like that. Lift your upper body up at the end and change. Stunning Katya. Right up onto the toes as high as you can. Straighten out your legs a lot to start with. Inhale, breathing. And crack your knees a little bit. And right heel forward, left heel forward. Both heels, both heels, both heels forward. Lift up the right heel, lift up the left heel. Yes, Samba, both heels, both heels forward. Lift up the right heel again. Kick the heels forward towards the screen. That's it, Lily. Right heel, left heel, both heels, both heels, both heels. Please change. Fabulous way. Rock solid now, man. Bring your knees together to touch. Lift heels a tad, suck your tummy, slide down your cool marble wall. And remember, what you're getting in this room is the tip of the iceberg. Your level of consciousness, what you'll notice is the tip of the iceberg. Squeeze your knees together all the way down. Pull your tummy muscles in. Drop shoulders away from your ears. Eyes are open, breath is normal. Squeeze your knees one more time. Inhale, breathing. Push. Walk all the way. Gorgeous. Feet together, arms down. Take a breath, let go. And breathe. Second set. Look down at your feet. Take a six and step to the right. In the room, I used to say, if you've got a sweaty footprint, you can step straight into that. Inhale your arms up to centre and drop your shoulders down deep away from your ears, sucking your tummy. Inhale breathing and boom, sit down on your chair. I feel very, very grateful that I've got my hot yoga dome, guys, because honestly, those rooms are really, really hot. I'm so good, glad I kept up the heat for me, you know. Drop your shoulders. Oh, no, oh, no, I'd been a fool in there. Drop the shoulders away from your ears. Yes, Wayne, I'd have been a fool if I had practiced in the heat. Lift your upper body up. Get the weight back in the heels. Drop the shoulders away from your ears a little bit more, Barbie. Curl your chest up. One more breath, Barbie. Yes, change. Stunning, sir. Rock right upon your toes as high as you can. Straighten out your legs a lot to start with and contract your thigh muscles, then you're the highest you can be on your toes. Now, on that point, crack your knees a little bit, push the weight forward. Crack the knees a little bit, push the weight forward into the toes. Lift up the right heel, lift up the left heel, both heels, both heels, both heels. And then the right heel, and then the left heel, and both heels, both heels, both heels. And you kick them out, so don't back bend too much, Barbie. Keep your spine a little bit straighter. That's it. Right heel, going to the feet, left heel, going to the feet, right heel, bar. yes, Wayne, right heel, left heel, both heels, both heels, both heels, and change. It feels gorgeous when you're all the way up on the toes. Bring your knees together to touch. You lift your heels a little bit, suck in your tummies, my beloveds, and slide down your cool marble wall. Point your knees down towards the bottom of the screen, and you're stopping hovering an inch or two off your heels. The eyes are open, the breath is normal, squeeze your knees together as much as you can. It's brilliant for the inside of your thighs, incredible for women, because we don't really get to work that too much. Now, those of you who know your knees, if they're healthy, bounce, if you want to. One, two, three, stop on the up, bounce. Gorgeous, Shahid, doing her breathing, push. The floor away, feet together. Arms down, take a breath, let go, and breathe. Let's do Garuda Garudasana and open the 14 major joints in your bodies. So please inhale your arms above your head. Notice which is the right and which is the left and swing your right arm underneath your left arm. Cross your forearms, thumb towards your face, pull your elbows down. Sit down deep, butt out, chest up. Pick up your right leg as high as you can. Wrap it, coil it, bend it, squeeze it. Now guys, just think of the squeeze. It's a squeeze that's really activating the lymph, you know, to move the lymph around your body, to squeeze out toxins. Lift your body up, Barbie. Lift your body up from your waist. Warm your waist, yes. Show, pull the shoulders down. So the thing, once your fingers are niched below your nose, catch you, which yours are perfectly. And the shoulders are completely released and changed. And so are yours, Wayne. Aha, see? Arms over your head and swing the left underneath the right. It's the hardest thing to get your fingers below your nose. It's much harder than kicking your forehead and kicking your leg out. Pull the elbows down, sit down deep. 
because it's a subtle movement that's required. Now you pick up your left leg and wrap it in coil it and bend it. Yours are coming on beautifully, Aileen. They're getting lower, yes, Amber. They're getting lower, girls. Keep pulling them down, releasing your shoulders. Lift your body up, Wayne, just a little bit. And now move your knees to the right. Keep on pulling the elbows down, a little bit by little bit. Work on the shoulders to do it. Pull one more breath and change. Arms over your head. And please swing again, the right underneath your left. Cross your forearms. The swing really facilitates the squeezing of your armpits. Sit down deep. Butt out, chest up. Pick up the right leg and wrap it and coil it and bend it and squeeze it. So you know I'm talking about the subtleties of the movements that you get through the postures. Getting your fingers an inch below your nose is a hardest thing that you can do. It's much harder than getting your forehead to your knee. You can practice that. But this is a whole different tweaking of very, very tiny, subtle indications. Keep pulling the elbows down. Keep lifting your upper body up. Bring your fingers closer to your face and see where they touch. If they're below your nose, you're golden. Change. Arms over your head. And please swing the left underneath your right. Cross your forearms, some towards your face. Pull the elbows down, sit down. Pull the elbows down, sit down. Pick up the leg and wrap it and coil it. Now, when you wrap, did you hear that glitch? Pull the elbows down, pull the elbows down. Okay, when you pull the elbows down, guys, and lift your bodies up, feel which part of your shoulders and neck that you're pulling as you pull the elbows down to get your fingers lower because that is what you're trying to release once you release that tension then the fingers are just there happily change arms over your head let them float down and change so to get the fingers below your nose it's a big movement in your neck and those um what we, i call them the yoke i call it the yoke of the shoulders that's what you're actually moving the subtleties in our yoga, the, 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 God is in the goddess is in the detail. The goddess is in the detail. They say devil, but that's not true. Please, would you straighten out your left leg? Contract your left thigh muscle. Round over. And please pick up your right foot. And interlock your fingers under your thumb just below the toes. In the soft padded part of your right foot. And you straighten out your knee, you straighten out your knee, straighten out your knee, your big toes into the floor. We're all at about 15 seconds in or so, guys, because I've clicked the clock on. Keep on contracting the thigh muscle. Dig your big right toe into the floor and make sure your left back, I mean, big left toe, make sure your left thigh muscle is so tight because it's contracted, it will soften. Now, if you're ready, inhale, exhale, and please would you kick your right heel forward towards the screen and pull your toes back towards your face. Your legs should look like an upside down L, which is perfect, Shahida, perfect, Katia, very, very gorgeous, Lily. And as you pull your toe, and everybody's on your one foot, you're in the game, guys. And as you pull your toes back hard, kick one more time through that right hip, left, right hip forward, and begin to bend your elbows down. So all I'm going to ask you to do is bend your elbows down and squeeze your calf muscles with the elbows for three and two. And done. Stunning. We're still over a minute. One, two. Straighten out your right leg, sucking your tummy round over my beloveds. And pick up your left foot and interlock your fingers and your thumb. Shade way and the ball of your foot. And straighten the leg that you're standing on. And straighten the leg that you're standing on. That's it, Shahid. It's how you're relocating it. In half moon, Shahid, when you start to move that hip all, all the way over, that's when that hip will completely release for you, darling. As you straighten the knee, straighten the knee. Okay, guys, we're about 20 seconds in. So if anybody wants to put more weight on your right leg, which is your more dominant leg, then you kick your right heel forward and you do not have to. Stunning shade, a very, very good right leg, Shahida. Stunning, baby. As you pull your toes back hard towards your face, two straight legs, two straight arms, and a straight back. Then begin to bend your elbows down to break the plane, the calf muscle. Lovely, Lily, very good, Barbie. Once the elbows go be down, Lily, then keep, keep on kicking the heel forward. And all you've got to do is hold it there. And for you, Amber, it's just getting the elbows lower. Five, four, three, two, done. Take a breath, let go and breathe. And you're kicking out so strongly, Barbie, I know because you're in the hot room. That's why, because your body's so loose in the hot room that you're easy to kick out and it gives you strength here. You know, very good. When you're ready, let's do the other side. Straighten out your left leg round over, pick up your right foot. And straighten the knee. Straighten the leg you're standing on. Dig your big right toe down hard, left toe down hard into the ground. Contract your thigh muscle so you feel your knee lift up and lock into place. And try to keep your right, your left thigh muscle hard. 
If you're ready, we're going to go all the way. Kick your left heel, right heel forward. Once you kick the right heel forward, stunning. Everybody, stunning. Pull your toes back hard towards your face. And you pull your toes back hard towards your face and kick through that right heel forward. If you've got two straight legs, two straight arms and straight back, then once some more, begin to bend your elbows. Lovely, Ma. Ma, keep lifting your heel up slightly and you're going to find it easier. It's a little bit low, your heel. Lift it up slightly. Yes, Ma. And keep on bending your elbows. Gorgeous, Ma. Big toe into the floor. Now, if you're ready, cast your eyes to the ground. Stunning, Chrissy. Once you get your eyes to the ground, very, very good, Amber. The elbows are nearly below. Yes, Amber, they're going below, baby. And now just get your chin to the baby. Go five, four, three, two, one, done. Boom. You nailed it, baby. Yes, Katya, she deserves a clap. You got it, boom. That means the backside of your back has, has opened, your neck and shoulders have opened sufficiently. Buda bum bum. Other side. Straighten out your right leg, sucking your tummy round over. Pick up the other foot. Interlock your fingers and your thumb below the toes. You know you work for something, you work for something, you work for something, suddenly it's just there. Straighten the leg you're standing, contract your thigh muscle. Straighten the leg you're standing on. Dig your big right toe down hard into the ground and contract your thigh muscle again to allow that, light, that thigh muscle to lift up. It's going to help the strength. Now, if you're ready, you've got that strength. Gorgeous, Chrissy, now let exhale. And kick that left heel forward again. Stunning, Shahida. You've really nailed that side of you, baby. Very, very beautiful. The healing is really there. Pull your toes back hard. Now, begin to bend your elbows down to break the plane of the calf muscle. Beautiful posture, Wayne. Beautiful posture, Aileen. And all you're doing, Aileen, is kicking and relaxing your shoulders. Kick your heel, relax your shoulders. Kick your heel, and what that will do, it will allow your shoulders to open more. And the strength of your heel is going to do it. Fabulous, Shida. Now, change so gorgeous, Katia. Big toe into floor, Katia. You just see it holding there. You hold it with Lily in Brazil. You hold it with Mara in Brazil. You hold it, Shida. Change so for Shida. You hold it, you hold it also with Amber in Canada. Three, boom, two, done, boom. Take a breath, let go and breathe. So three different countries held the posture the same amount of time. Exactly. Breathe. Well done. Well done. 5D yoga. Toes and heels together to touch. Bend your right elbow into the waist palm facing up. Let your hand go down and please pick up the foot from the inside and touch your knees. Because remember, this is a measurement. Inhale with energy, your right arm up really high. Left arm up, I mean. By and right far back behind your head. Inhale, breathing, and now begin to kick the leg back directly back behind you. Lovely Barbie, Barbie, leave do that left arm bit. Keep on, yes, 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 Barbie. When you keep that up, that so hold your balance, gorgeous Chrissy. And Chrissy, you're nailing that knee going behind you, darling. This is superb, Chrissy. As you kick the leg up, you kick the leg up, and so are you, my Aileen. As you kick the leg up, and this is stunning, Amber. And this is stunning, Amber, because already the upper body now is completely open, the gorgeous way. And you kick the leg back, Katu, it's stunning. Shader, it's stunning. And and you kick the leg back with Barbie, and it's also stunning. Now, everybody, oh, everybody's nailing it. Begin to bring the right left shoulder toward your chin. Ma and Lily, it is absolutely superb, girls. As you keep on kicking the leg up a little bit more, it is normal to fall out. You can come straight back in. Now, all you have to do with Amber is kick up the leg with Wayne for five, kick it up with Ma for four, kick it with Barbie and Shahida for three, two, one, with Lily. Boom. Take a breath. This posture is infused with beauty. It is the most beautiful posture of the whole series. Whenever you do it, you bathe in beauty. And you're gonna get wet like you bathe in water. You get wet, you're going to be bathed in beauty. Left elbow into the waist, palm facing up. You soak it in just like the water makes you wet. Inhale with energy, pick up the foot, bring your knees together to touch, my beloveds. Inhale with energy, your right arm up. Because everybody, you know, if you're going to show a posture, you put a posture to show, don't you do this one because it's incredible. And as you kick your leg back, lift up that right arm, keep it by your ear, Aileen. You're leaning a little bit to the left, can you feel it? Lean a little bit, get the knee back, get the knee back, get the knee back, get the knee back. Yeah, you're going to lead with your right arm. It's the right arm, Aileen, that's actually going to lead the balance. The left leg, just kick it hard. 
Yes, Lily. Oh, God, just lining up your shoulders already in one line, Lily. And there you go, Ma. The whole leg is disappearing. Now, the leg's slightly coming out to the side, Ma. So just keep that right hip down, left hip down a bit. Yes, Ma, it's completely disappeared. And as you kick the leg back behind you, one day you're going to have the foot coming up over the top of the head. As you kick the leg back behind you a little bit more, and you keep on kicking. Now begin to bring right shoulder towards your chin. Touch it in the shoulder. So dynamic, Lily. Very, very good, Ma. Keep on kicking with three, two, one. So dynamic, those postures. Breathe. Breathe. All your body, all the muscles, all the bones, of you realign them and you work them to make this incredible shape. And all your internal organs are mirroring the shape inside of you. Right elbow in at the waist, palm facing up. Let your hand go down and pick up the foot. It's making everything about you beautiful inside out from your bones to your skin. Inhale with energy, that left arm up, touch your knees. Inhale breathing and kick the leg directly back behind you. And I can see how you're internally, Aileen, you're working out the little intricacies, the balances and the opening. And you're, it brings another intelligence to you, Aileen. And that's what you're doing. You're working with this other intelligence as you kick the leg back even more gorgeous, Barbie. This is gorgeous, Barbie. And keep on kicking and keep on kicking. Yes, Aileen. This is lovely, 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 Aileen. As you kick the leg back a little bit more and you keep on kicking now, gorgeous Katia. Begin to bring the left shoulder towards your chimney with amber. And you touch it in the shoulder. So two of you is in Canada or one of you in LA, all you three doing the same time and now Brazil's coming in, Brazil's coming in and you kick the leg up a little bit more. You keep on kicking up a little bit more. Now begin to bring left shoulder towards your chin, tucked in the shoulder, yes, when kick five, kick four, kick three, two, done. Gorgeous, Shahida. You came out, at, you were going to come out and then you went in a little bit even deeper. Beautiful baby. Left elbow in the waist, palm facing up. Your hand go down, pick up the foot. Knees together to touch. Inhale with energy, your right arm up. Inhale, breathing, guys, and begin to kick the leg directly back and lift. Yes, Wayne, the shape is beautiful. You kick and you lift, you kick and you lift. Yes, Katia, absolutely stunning postures, baby. And you kick and lift just a little bit more. Now, as you keep on kicking, kick the leg up, keep on kicking, kick the leg back. And as you kick the leg back enough, it's stretching through your left shoulder. Actually, it's also stretching through the left neck. You one that you just stretched in Garuda is actually stretching through the left side of your neck as well. And it's also stretching your elbows so you don't get tennis elbows. It's also stretching your wrist so you don't get terrible tunnel syndrome as you kick the leg back stunning Katia the leg is really nearly straight now Katia to both your legs in one line from the side now start to drop left shoulder towards your chin touching the shoulder kick it up by kick 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 three two one it was your best daily fabulous girl Katia that was outrageous breathe breathe when you're ready please right elbow sorry comes to the back of your mat inhale your arms above your head Interlock your fingers, release your index finger. Remember, don't look down, you're stiff as a rod. Just take a great big step in your right foot. Instantly point your left toe so your knee goes straight. Inhale, breathing, and then bring your upper body down. That's it, it's just pointing the toe, Aileen. More pointing the toe, Aileen, and bring the body down. Don't think of the body, body's easy to come down. You've got that, just keep pointing the toe. Just keep pointing the toe, fabulous part. Fabulous Barbie, body down, arms up, fabulous Amber. Keep on reaching forward, standing way, stretch forward, stretch back, and change. Everybody has that beautifully. Breathe, take a great big step on your left foot, point your right toes, inhale breathing, and then go bring your upper body down. Every so often, guys, you get breakthroughs in your body when your body just accepts something that it's been learning at from the time you started class. Body down, arms up, body down, leg up, keep on reaching forward, point the toes behind you. Body down, arms up, body down, leg up, and done. Feet together, arms down, take a breath, let go. This is your life. This is the one life. Observe yourself in it. When you observe yourself in this life, you are engaging your highest part because that's who's observing. Not your physical body, your highest part observing your physical body in this life. Inhale your arms above your head. Interlock your fingers, release your index, glue your together, take a great big step, right foot, don't look down. Inhale, breathing, and bring your upper body down, body down, arms up. And every time you come to class, you're controlling that dynamic between your higher self and introducing it to your lower self, let's say, as you get the weight of the toes, arms, body down, arms up, body down, leg up, done.
Breathe. Very good, Wayne. Breathe. Take a great big step on your left foot, point your right toe. Inhale, breathing. And then go bring your upper body down. Body down, arms up. Body down, leg up. Keep on pointing the toes behind you. Stretching forward a little bit. Body down, arms up. Body down, leg up. Stretch forward, stretch back. Change. Breathe. Let your arms float down. Take a breath. And let go and breathe. Okay, guys. Let's do it down there, manner. A bit back to part of passion up now. So you see how it comes directly after three cardios, where we instantly rest the heart and feed the body with all the oxygen we pumped into the body with the cardios. You see the magic in it? Take a great big foot. Inhale your arms over your head. Take a great big foot and a half a step to the right. Arms down parallel immediately. Toes in, heels out, and if you have sciatica, they stay straight. Suck your tummy and you go down. Gorgeous stretch, Barbie. A gorgeous stretch. Barbie, right then, you look like the Vitruvian man. You know that Leonardo drew in the circle. You looked identical to that. And the only way, Barbie, that you could, at, the, at this age, look like the Vitruvian man in a circle, is if your body was mirroring the blueprint. Lift your hips up into the air, because when you're true in one thing, Barbie, it's true in everything. Lift your hips up into the air. I'm so proud to be able to tell you that, Barbie. I didn't see it before. Get the weight of the toe, give your hips in the air, pull. Lovely Shahida. Now, Shahida, try to get your elbows closer to your knees. Try to get your elbows and your knees to touch. Remember when I did it in class and I bent my knees and I stuck my knees in my elbows? And then I wrapped the elbows and I really gripped behind so I could, the knees could never come away again. Yeah, baby. And then you end up by having to push in the knees into the, and when they're glued together, your tummy's glued onto your thighs. Lovely Chrissy. Fingers are working further back now, baby girl. Lift your hips up in the air, pull one more breath and change. Inhale as you come up. And when your elbows and your knees touch, it means your back is perfectly straight in this position. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to get there. You get 100% benefits every step, every time you drop your head down, brain's flooded with fresh oxygenated blood. And breathe. So inhale your arms above your head, take a great big four and a half steps to the right, arms down parallel immediately. Again, the toes in, heels out, arms back, chin up, sucking your tummy, and you go down. It almost demonstrates your vitality, you know, Barbie. Slide your hand to the back of your legs, grab further behind the feet now, Christine, because you can. Because you've opened up your hamstrings, Christine, you work a lot on your hips. Very lovely, Aileen. Lift your hips up into the air, get the weight into the toes. And as you bend your elbow, and remember, when you get the weight into the toes, it's the most important part of your foot to get very, very strong. The weight should be so much in your toes that you can almost lean forward like the leaning tower of Pisa and you're not going to fall over because the front part of your foot is completely controlling the whole of the weight and the lean. Lift your hips and this is what's going to stop you from falling when you get older and doing something nasty. Lift your hips up into the air, pull one more breath and change. You may trip up but you're not going to fall, go in the full crash, boom, broke my hip, done. Feet together, arms down, take a breath, let go. And you breathe. If you'd like a sip of your water, please do. You're doing a, a spectacular class. Spectacular. Okay. So please inhale your arms above your head, trick and ask the triangle, close the master posture. Take a great big four and a half at step to the right, arms down parallel immediately. Please push your hips forward, arms back, and turn on your right heel. Turn them to a half inch more. Turn the back foot in, 45 degree angle, inhale breathing. Suck in your tummy, sit down, sit down, sit down into the right knee. And then please just move your arms. Once your elbow gets in front of that right knee, you stop there and push your knee back with the help of the elbow. And remember as teachers, you can instruct anybody to put your elbow on top of your right knee. And that will keep, still keep them in perfect triangle without them having, without their body coming down as it gets heavier. Now look up towards your left thumb. Straighten out your left arm. It's looking very good again, Barbie. And get your chin down slightly. Turn your chin, touch your shoulder, roll your eyes up. Straighten out the whole of your left leg. Round the whole side of your left foot into the ground, baby toe, and the left side of the foot. And this is the side of the foot that you're pushing into, you know, to get that half moon. So you're strengthening it in here. Very good, Aileen. Touch it into the shoulder, baby girl. Lovely, Amber. Just get the back of the neck a little bit longer, Amber. Just in down slightly. Perfect, babe. Change. Gorgeous, Wayne. Fabulous, fabulous, Wayne. It's four downs back. Turn on the other heel. 
Turn the toe a half inch more. Back foot turns inward. Inhale, breathing. Sit down, sit down, sit down. And suck in your tummy. And just move your arms. And when your elbow gets in front of me, you stop there and push me back for help with the elbow. This class is an expression of love towards your own being. Not only do you benefit from doing this class, but the whole of humanity benefits because you are raising the level of your personal frequency. And in so doing, you raise the level of mankind's frequency as well. Like the hundred monkey theory. Stretch your arms in opposite direction. Keep sitting into the right hip. Uh, touch your chin to the shoulder. Very, very good. Very, very good, um, Shahida. Now, Shahida, just get the chin down slightly. So the back of the neck just stretches a little bit more. Beautiful, baby girl. As you stretch your arms in opposite directions, reach up, reach down, and you change. Very gorgeous. Feet together, arms down, take a breath. Let go and breathe. And when you teach this, Teach it anywhere up to a minute. If you've got a lot of new people in the class, 30 seconds is, is usually quite enough. You know, give, always give them something that they can chew, not, never too much massive for new people. So inhale your arms over your head. Let's do it again. And a great big four and a half a step to the right. Arms down parallel. Push your hips forward. Arms back. Turn on the right heel. Turn the to a half inch more. Back foot in, 45 degree angle. Inhale, breathing. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Bounce a little bit like a motorcycle ride. You've heard it before. Bounce, 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 all the way down. Then suck in your tummy. Just move your arm. Very, very good, Ma. Very, very good. And as you turn your chin, touch and shoulder. This is lovely way. Now, way. keep the weight in your right elbow and keep sitting into the right hip, taking the weight with your elbow. Gorgeous, Wayne. Now get your chin just down slightly. And yes, Wayne, it's perfect now. From your ankle, Wayne, all the way through your legs, all the way through your straight spine, all the way through to your skull and out to the top of your head. Gorgeous, Katia. Stretching your arms in opposite directions like an actual human tug of war. Keep sitting the hips down, Barbie. It's lifting up a little bit. Do you feel it? Yes, baby. Reach up, reach down. Down, that's enough. Keep four downs back. Turn the left heel. Turn to a half inch more, back foot turns in, inhale, breathing. Sit down, sit down, sit down, suck in your tummy and just move your arms. Once your elbow gets in front of you, you stop there, pushing it back, the help of the elbow. And you know what I see in Barbie and what I see in Wayne is their bodies are very, very light. Their muscles, their legs still look very, very beautiful. They were born, both of them, with very beautiful bodies genetically and they have not let them go. If you were born with an incredible body, to sit on the couch and not even work it and let it just go into a blob is almost a sin. Stretch your arms in opposite direction. Yes, my Aileen, as you reach up as high as you can with my amber, back of the neck down slightly, amber, back of the neck down slightly, just chin down slightly, reach up, reach down, and that's enough. Gorgeous, Wayne. Gorgeous, Barbie. And feet together, arms down, take a breath, let go. And you breathe. You know you were given this. How many people just let it go? Hey, Michael. So when you're ready, inhale your arms up over your head. Hands in prayer. Cross your thumbs. Take a three foot step to the right. I love him, Barbie. By you, I can't help myself. Lift your toes and spin. One, two, three, four, five. Say, yeah, you're getting it, Aileen. Chin down, sucky, tummy round over. It's a fun little twist on those heels at once. But you get to use it in your life. Because when you get used to twisting on both of your heels at once, you can spin around very, very quickly because you're using your heels. When you get used to doing it, you kind of spin on your own axis, which I like because I like to be fast. Chin down, lovely. Amber, keep it chin in tight. I've been feeling this a lot. To be honest, Amber, I've chosen to actually sit down after the posture when I'm doing it in the dome. I really do because this compression is like such an effect on me. Squeeze, yes. Change, round up. This compression is, is the strongest, it's the most difficult posture to do. Become used to say this one. Lift your toes, spin to the screen. Lift your toes, spin again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Chin down, suck your tummy round over. And it's the compression. It was never really explained why, as I remember. But I know now it's the vagus nerve. It's the way we're squeezing that vagus nerve. Sometimes you just have a feeling you've got to spin out of it. And I believe it's something to do with, you know, like when we do um, camel. When you're in the room, at the hot room, and you do come, sometimes you can do it for three seconds. You've got to lie down quick in the beginning, you know? I think it's the same thing. So we're activating the weight works and the vagus nerve. Get your forehead on, Barbie. Do that first. Do the very, very first thing you do, Barbie, is get your forehead on your knee. 
and change around that. You've got to bend the knee to do it though, Bobby, because you've got two straight legs, but no posture yet. Feet together, arms down, take a breath, let go and breathe. This posture is a spine posture. The legs are there just to facilitate the rounding of the spine. It's not a leg posture or an arm posture. It's a spine and belly posture. Second set. Inhale your arms, hold your head, hands in prayer, cross your thumbs. Take a three foot step to the right. Lift your toes now and spin on both of your heels at once. One, two, three, four, five, six. Chin down, suck in your tummy and get your chin into your throat now. Now, everybody, bend your front knee. I don't want the front straight leg, Barbara. Yeah, bend your front knee and touch your third eye on it and get your fingertips behind your heels so that your back begins to round. Gorgeous, Bobby. And then you're entering the Fibonacci sequence. Get your forehead as high as you can. The higher you get the forehead on your knee, the more the bend at the back of the skull, the deeper the Fibonacci. Round up. Everybody got that beautifully. Last thing to lift is your skull. Now lift your toes and spin on both of your heels at once. Or one, two, three, four, five, six. Chin down, suck in your tummy. And then round over, get the chin in tight. Bend your front knee and get your forehead and your knee. Put your hands on the ground even before you get your forehead and your knee if that's needed. And get your hands further back and bend the knee. Bend it, bend it, bend it. If it's not bending, I'm realizing it's not bending because obviously it's bending on the other side, Barbie. So there's something going on. So forget anything I said. Um, just you keep working on bending the knee, sir, because it's beautiful. Sucking your tummy, round your spine, inhale breathing and round up. So obviously if you can do something perfect on one side and the other, the other, then we're working through something, you know, some trauma in the hip or the knee or something, probably the foot. And feet together, arms down, take a breath, let go and breathe. Let go and breathe. Whatever is difficult in your muscles and skeleton, this posture will push it to the surface so it can be worked on. Straighten out your right leg, left leg, pick up the right foot. Hold the foot as high as you can, your thigh, and go for your balance. Go for your balance. And breathe. This is what you're doing. Not only are they asking you to balance on one leg, they're putting the other leg in such an awkward position and your arms not even able to help you if you fall. So what they're doing is they're giving you a difficult way of balancing. So when you're in life and you're walking with a tray and you trip one up, one foot and the other foot's in the air, you're not just going to like crash and burn. Change. Straighten out your right, pick up the left. Hold the foot as high as you can on your thigh. And straighten the leg again, contract your thigh muscle. You're teaching tiny little subtle movements of the foot are indicating your brain to adjust, okay? To keep you in one shape and upright. So when you fall, all the information that your foot starts to give to your brain that you're falling, da, 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 your brain's going, oh, no, okay, blah, 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 and work it out. That's what you're actually doing. You're working out how to land well or how not to fall when you're 90. Change. Straighten out your right le left leg again and pick up the right foot. And now they're going to ask you to start bending over and not fall. For toe stand. That's what they're asking from you, Wayne. Can you do And when you can do this on one leg? Even if you trip up and you bend the knee, it's fine. You're still not going to crash and burn. And you breathe and you're working on lifting up your left hand. Good for you, Chrissy. Good for you, darling. Because this is working, Chrissy, in your lower back, your spine, everything. Gorgeous, Shahida, you've named it. Breathe. I'm giving you the time. You've got the time to find the balance. Yes, Katia. Yes, Lily. And change. Gorgeous, guys. Gorgeous. And that big toe is so strong, it can hold your whole body. Straighten it out your right. Pick up the leg. So you see what you're doing. You see what you're doing. Bend over, get your hands out, where to catch yourself on the floor. One toe, one big toe. And you can do everything. Whole body. You can balance on it. And your body becomes agile, lovely, lean. 
because Aileen, you've always been very, very good with your muscles because you worked on them a lot. So I knew that once you start to interact with your muscles in a, in a yogic way, then you, you the, your postures would just unfold, which they have. Lovely, um, Lily. You even lifted the bottom off the heel at the end, Lily. And change. Good for you, boo. Honor yourselves. And then you're going to turn around and lay down and let go. And breathe. I once heard a saying that resonated with me. And you know, sayings are things that show you what goes on in this world, like in little mini little things, like the early worm catches a bird, you know, little things. And as you lay down and you let go and you breathe. And one of the things that has always resonated with me is that if you have a purpose and you're and going in that direction, you do not stop on the way to pick up stones to throw at barking dogs, because you have a purpose. I really liked that saying. All of you are, have a purpose. Your purpose is to awaken in this life. That is the goal, is to awaken in this life. There are a lot of barking dogs on the route to your awakening. In fact, every single thought from the outside world is a barking dog. So as they throw at you something to be irritated with, and you stand and you get an irritation, you just stopped on your journey to your self-awakening to throw stones at the barking dogs. What I'm beginning to understand more and more is that the path to awakening is your point of view and weighing up, well, what is more value? It gives you a value system. So when something starts, and it actually det detaches you a little bit, because as soon as you can start to evaluate, well, is this thought pattern I've got at the moment, this irritation because my coffee's arrived and it's cold, is that more important? than me waking up. You ask yourself the questions. Now, the irritation, if they didn't get you that time, is going to come another time, you stub your toe. Because what it's trying to initiate the outside world constantly is trying to distract you from this one goal that you have. Now, you know I tell you, anybody who has tried to remember themselves, you all know something very, very deep mystically, where you are. Because if you go on the tube in London, where, or the Metro, I think you call it here, you go on the tube, you've got, if you want to go somewhere, you've got to see where you are to know actually where you are going. Can't get there if you don't know where you're starting from. This act of self-remembering, it gives you a very, very clear indication of your state of being and where you are, that the outside world does not have. You ask anybody in the outside world, can they do? Do they have will? Can they do something that they set their will to do? And every single person will say, yes, I have will. Everybody, because they think, oh yeah, will I get up every morning? I, I do this, but will, as we know is, can you remember yourself for more than one second? When was the last time you remembered yourself? When was the last time you were aware of your own presence, which is the most important and valuable thing in your existence is your own presence. And we do not remember ourselves. You all remember the first photograph I asked you to take of yourself, uh, and not of yourselves, but of the place. Not one person took a picture of themselves because we don't remember ourselves. We completely ignore that the most important thing in your existence, that is what's ignored. The matrix is super clever. You have to go pat it on the back for that one because that was like, yeah, that's genius. To make yourself humanity to forget 
humanity, beings made of light, built in the image of the divine, to make them forget that they're even existing and they have no idea, except a perception of existence, looking at the shadows on the wall, that was bloody genius, but it's not catching me. No. So every time you catch yourself, when you keep remembering yourself, so you know that you have no will, because if you had will, you would be able just to will yourself to remember yourself from this moment. But you know, you fall asleep instantly. You remember yourself a second and you fall asleep instantly. Every so often, when you practice enough, it gives you enough energy that one day, it remember you remember yourself by yourself. It just happens. And when that happens, it's like you're walking down the street and suddenly the light goes on. Like you walked out of the cave into the sunlight, away from the fire and the smoke and the shadows on the wall, which the rest of humanity are believing are real. And they believe it's so real that they will kill you if you come and tell them any different because you are so crazy that you can't even be here. Which is why the mystery schools are always mysterious and underneath and far away. They have to be done and quietly away. Because if the wrong ones wake up, that's where they're going from. Like the great inquisitions. Leonardo used to have to hide his knowledge. Le um, Michelangelo, they hid their knowledge, sometimes in poems and things, but it had to be known the down low so not everybody sees it, who may want to destroy it. Because the matrix does not want you to wake up. Once you understand that you don't actually have will, then you begin to have will because you know what real will is. And the outside world, that's why I use the word very much. You know, I will see you later, inshallah. I say inshallah simply because that means God willing. And what I am doing is I am saying, I will do that if a higher power wills it because obviously I have no will to be able to do that. And you think, well, yes, you are, Fab Francesca. I've been in studio before, completely teaching the class, completely sure that I'm going to be there at the end of the class. And then the alarm goes in the studio, fire alarm, we're all in the street. No will at all to stay in that studio, if you understand. Learn to love yourself, but observe yourself, guys, every single minute and understand where you sit. Once you know you don't have any will, then you can work towards will. If you're quite sure that you have it, well, you're in prison, you don't know you're in prison. That's how it works. My darlings, when you're ready, pick up your right leg and interlock your fingers under your thumb and grab that leg on top of and just below the knee. And then pull the knee away from the rib cage and in towards your armpit and the back of your neck is long. And if you were to say to a physicist or some kind of mental genius that they have no will, they would want to jump you. I've got will, I'm a genius. What do you mean, Paul? Hold, breathe, freeze right there. And change and pick up the other leg. Do you understand what we are looking for? It's of a different stuff than this world, what the, this world trains you to look for. In mysticism, it's a different stuff. Pull, hold, breathe, freeze right there. And change. And then you pick up both of your legs and swing your arms around them. Because from our point of view, what's the point of being a genius? What's the point of being a professor, a physicist, a neuroscientist? What's the point? Pull your knees in really tight, the back of your neck is long, if you don't awaken. If there's no awakening, boom, then, boof, gone. Pull, hold. You are not aware that you are present on the planet. What kind of genius is that? Pull one more breath and change. We have been taught the wrong things to aspire to. Pick up your right leg and interlock your fingers on your thumb on purpose. And the ancient man knew this. Ancient man all over the planet, all the ancient beings on different parts of our globe had an ancient understanding of their people and, other, and that is what has been hidden from us. Pull one more breath and change. Wayne and I are very, very deep in that. Pick up the other leg and interlock your fingers under your thumb. And there's a, there's a site on the, on the Instagram where you can see ancient things that were incredible and destroyed on purpose to keep us stupid. Get the back of your neck long, pull. Hold, breathe, freeze, right there. And change. And then you pick up both of your legs and swing your arms around them and grab your elbows and get the back of your neck long and the chin is down. 
And that's why it's so important to resonate to what is real and what is the truth. You understand intrinsically what is truth and what is made up. If you follow the made up, you're giving something much higher away. Truth is so, such a vibration you have to be on. Put one more breath and change. If you are being told a crock and you buy it, you are giving something of yourself very valuable away to imbeciles, really. Arms over your head and flex your toes back. Inhale, sit up. Exhale, exhale, spin around. And then your bellies. Hands, palms. See, baby, love you, Aileen. Then your belly, hands, palms underneath your shoulders. Get the tip of your fingers level with the top of your shoulders, zip your legs up. You do not have legs, you just have one cobra's tail. Now inhale, breathing, and peel your upper body up and look up, lift up. And what you will find as you go in this path to self-awakening, there are certain subjects that are going to resonate with you. There are certain subjects that you're going to find when you need to know more about, more about. And they spring from you. These subjects spring from you as you lift up, go up one more breath, and then come down. Look to the right, put your left ear on the floor, your arms are down by your side. And you let go and you breathe. You breathe. I didn't come to this yoga from the Indian line. I came to this yoga completely through mysticism. That's why I know that this is real. And that's why I couldn't explain why I thought this is real to somebody who perhaps doubted that this was real. It's just from my angle where I come from. I know it's real. Chin forward. Get your elbows underneath your um, hands, palms underneath your shoulders. Because truth has a certain bell sound to it. There's a certain pure note of a bell. Zip your legs up, inhale, breathing, and peel your upper body up. And I know exactly you know what I'm talking about, Wayne. As you drop the shoulders away from the ears, that sound therapy, you know, if you lift up and come up. And when something is, and you hear the same, oh, it's as clear as a bell. As you lift up, go up, breathe up, one more lift. And then come down. That resonated, hey, Patty, because you know the sayings in the world are what guide you. Lost in thought. Absent-minded professor. Absent means the no-minded professor. Oh, they're all there. God, the, you could see the light in her. She lit up. The sayings are all there. Chin forward. And you know if a bell is cracked, the sound's not right. Lies are not right. You know they're not right. Forget about your left leg, lengthen out your right leg, inhale, breathe, and go lift your right leg up. And if you know something is, is not the truth and you buy that non-truth, you are really shortchanging yourself because you are a divine being made of light, point the toe, activate the foot, hold it there, change. Forget that leg, lengthen the left, inhale and go and lift the left leg up and point the toe. And before our very eyes, you can see non-truth being pushed to us. Hold the leg really long. When everything in your body goes, hey, really? Hold, breathe, freeze, change. Face down, kiss the towel. Walk your fingers down towards your knees, spread your fingers, grip the towel, zip your legs up. Inhale, breathing, and go lift both legs up the floor into the air. Push your face down to the floor, push your shoulder down to the floor, very, very good trader. Toes and heels together, lift up, go up. Fabulous, Wayne, everything's off the floor now. Your belly's off the floor, Wayne. As you go up, lift up one more breath, and then come down. And let go. You look into the right, your arms are down by your side. And you breathe. Let go. Chin forward. Turn your hands, palms down the ground, and get your elbows underneath your body again. Baby fingers touching side by side. Forget about your left leg, lengthen out your right leg. Inhale, breathe in and go. Lift your right leg up and point the toe. And you know, um, specifically, Katia, when you, I was talking about the books, the book that I read from Mr. Gurdjieff, I only advise people to buy the first copy because things, people go into books and they change stuff. Hold it and change. Good for you, Katia. You nailed that. Now you forget your left leg, lengthen, right leg, lengthen up your left, inhale and go and lift your left leg up. And so you never get the newer copy ever, 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 because there is a big thing to change what's in the books, like Orwell said. Hold, breathe, freeze, right there, and change. 
And now face down, kiss the towel, walk your fingers down towards your knees, spread your fingers, grip the towel, zip your legs up. Inhale, breathing, and go. Lift them, both legs up the floor into the air. Push your face down to the floor, push your shoulder down the floor. Lift your legs up, roll into your belly. Fabulous, Amber. As you lift up, go up, breathe up. Fabulous, Lily, fabulous, smile. One more lift. Come down, let go, and breathe. And my teacher, Mr. Gurdjieff, he personally chose the person to translate his book into the different languages. He did not allow a linguist to do that. Only somebody who understood the work would he allow to translate because of the words they would use so he could translate it to you clearly. Any other subsequent edition, the word changes have been in. So I never read those books, only his first one. He instructed me to, chin forward. You know all those Bibles are all different? Arms out to the side, toes and heels together. Zip your legs up, inhale, breathe and go. Lift everything up the floor into the air. Arms up low the top of your head. And you know the dictionaries are now different. And now they're all the different words are saying, oh, what a word meant before. It doesn't mean me now. As you look up, get your arms up, lift up, go up. And lift up, go up, breathe up, go up. One more lift, come down, boom, let go. So if you're ever reading a book of knowledge, get the first edition, never get the second, never get the third, never get any of the others. And never get what other somebody's, somebody else's interpretation of it was. Never do that. Go for the source yourself. Work it out for yourself. Mr. Gurdjieff taught me that. Breathe. Chin forward. Arms up to the side. Is it toe? Zip your legs up. Inhale, breathing now and go. Everything up the floor into the air. Try to lift your legs up, lift your body up, arms up. Try to get your legs up a little bit higher. Now, where are you hovering? You're on your belly in between the lower rib and the top of your hips. As you kick up, keep on, um, arms up, look up, keep on kicking, look up, kick, 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 come down and breathe. Actually, I was teaching, I was teaching bow. Excuse me for that. Look the other way. My eyes were closed. I was in the world of the books and the libraries. They have to change the, the things in the books for the indoctrination, they have to change. And Mr. Gurdjieff died in 1949. So he was telling me this stuff then. This isn't new stuff. This is stuff he was telling me then way back. Chin forward. And remember he died three years before I was born. Bend your legs behind you. So he was telling me that stuff from beyond the grave. Inhale, breathe and go, you kick up and you look up. And you know Orwell said it, Orwell said it, roll onto your belly and keep on kicking, kicking, kicking. So if you are a person that likes a Bible, find the most original one you can get, find the beginner one and roll onto your belly and kick up a little bit more up. Roll forward a little bit more, keep on kicking, arms out to your shoulder socket. Now drop your head back, look up, one more kick, come down. Let go, breathe. Let go, breathe. Chin forward. Bend your legs behind you. Reach around and grab your feet below the toes. Inhale, breathing, and go. You kick the legs back behind you. And the things that are not necessarily you find your own way, other things with education, keep kicking up and you're looking up, rolling onto your belly. Medicine, find the most natural way of taking medicine as you kick your legs up, not the petrol medicine, and you keep on kicking up, a gorgeous Shahida, and you kick, kick, kick one more. Yes, Barbie, and come down. You let go. You breathe. Okay, guys, great job. Let's do soup to adjustment. Fixed firm posture, the heel of the knees. Come to the top of your mat. Open your toes, open your feet, and get your butts on the ground in between and go back easy. You know, the only, I think the only thing perhaps the royal family did give in England is that the queen um, is homeopathic. So she only takes homeopathic medicine. Allopathic medicine is the medicine from your doctors, the drugs. Homeopathic medicine is homeopathic to your own body. It's natural medicine. I used homeopathic medicine the whole time. My children had homeopathic medicine from the get-go, from the giddy-up. And so is the queen. And because the royal family have homeopathic medicine, it is actually a medicine in England that you can get on healthcare. You don't have to go and pay privately to get that. It's on, you know, the NHS because it is known to work. It's known to work because it works on a very, very profound level, on an energetic level. It's not working on, you know, take a drug and block something. It's working on you energetically. 
put your hand on the top of your feet and come up easy. And then you turn around and you lay down and let go and breathe. I used to live in Ibiza, so I only got it to know. And we used to have a pool because everybody is in Ibiza, it was hot. All the kids when in the beginning, the first used to get Odetis, they used to call it infections in the ear. You know, from the pool in the beginning, whatever. Mine, I'd give them the homeopathic remedy, it would go and they would never have it again. Arms over your head, flex your toes back. Inhale, sit up. Exhale, exhale, and spin around and come again to the front of your mat. My sister was allopathic medicine. She would give them the, the antibiotics, whatever they did for that. And it would come back repeatedly. Go back easy. The homeopathic medicine heals you on a very deep level. And the thing is, it's totally safe. So, you know, you older people can take it. It's not going to disturb if they are on allopathic medicine. It's never going to disturb them. And you can, and there's, there's little books. I have my own little set, but you have little books where you can see what it's relative to. So you can actually very, very well diagnose yourself and give yourself little things. It's a lovely medicine to work with. And then come up, hands on the top of your feet. And you come up easy and turn around and lay down and let go and breathe. Melt into the ground and let go. Melt into the ground. Breathe. Allopathic medicine takes about five years to be adopted via homeopath, takes another six more. Arms over your head and flex your toes back. Inhale, sit up. Exhale, exhale, and spin around because they have to know the intricacy of every single medicine, what it would do with this and that. So come to the back of your mat and sit on your knees and sit on your heels. They both touch. Inhale your arms up over your head, hands in prayer, cross your thumbs, suck in your tummy and come down with a straight spine. Get your forehead to touch the floor a second before your arms, if that's available to you. Lift your wrists up off the floor so you're to straighten out your elbows. And you know, we don't say in the dialogue, straighten out your elbows. We say lift the wrists up off the floor and that automatically does straighten out the elbows. Now get the chin away from the chest, the tip of the nose just barely graces the towel. Squeeze your knees together, pull your tummy muscles in. Now keep lengthening your upper body forward so your body, lower body's relaxed, but upper body is lengthening forward, shoulder blades, scapula coming out of your bodies. Inhale breathing and come up the straight spine. And turn around and lay down and let go and breathe. And you can have homeopathic remedies for the animals as well. Horses, in England, horses are, are, tra are treated very, very much with homeopathic remedies. And horse racing is big in England. They like to gamble, I think. And you let go. And you let go. And breathe. And second set, arms over your head and flex your toes back. Inhale, breathing, please sit up. Exhale, exhale, and spin around. And come to the back of your mat and sit on your knees and sit on your heels. Inhale, your arms are over your head, hands in prayer, cross your thumbs, suck on your tummy, and come down the straight back. Lengthen forward. Squeeze your knees, squeeze your knees, squeeze your knees. Lay your belly on your legs as you come forward, and then your forehead will touch before your arms one day. It's how much, it's where you put the weight. And you know, your self-awakening is, is actually another understanding of where you put the weight. What do you feed? What feeds on you and what do you feed inside yourself, you know? Which part of you do you want to feed? You want to feed your highest part. Simple as that. That's where you want to put the weight in your highest part. Squeeze your knees, inhale breathing, and come up the straight back. And turn around and lay down and let go. And breathe. Melt into the ground. A little tail wagging. Let go. Let go. Camel, the master posture. Your body is a healing machine. This is a big healing posture. Arms over your head, flex your toes back. Inhale, sit up. Exhale, exhale, and spin around. Come stand on your knees. So your body actually, you know, can heal. You know, 30% of all the people that take placebos cure, are cured. 30%. Come and stand on your knees. Open your knees six inches, heel six inches. Hand on top of your bottom. Hips, tummy, thighs forward. Lift your chest up and drop your head back. And roll forward, roll forward, roll forward. 
push your hips and tummy thighs forward, lift your chest up, and you roll forward. And of the 30% that do heal with no medicine, they did it with their mind, they are the positive people when they're sick. You know, some people that get sick and they're miserable as sin, and others like, oh, yeah, I'll get through this. Yeah, I'll just do another way. They're the healers. They're the ones that are using this illness as a learning tool. They're definitely going to heal it and they'll probably be able to heal somebody else doing it. You're over halfway. You're rolling forward, rolling forward. Yes, Amber, push the knees over there. Push your hips over the knees. Push the hips over the knees. But now rather than side to side pushing the hips over the knees, you're pushing them forward over the knees. You're pushing them more, 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 more forward over the knees. Yes, Barbie. And you're letting your throat drop back. How many seconds have we got? Got seven seconds. Hip tummy thighs forward. Okay, guys, very gently put your hands back to your hips. Very lovely, Wayne. And turn around and lay down. Let go and breathe. Let go and breathe. Melt into the ground. You are a being made of light infused in this body of yours. And you know it's made of stardust. But you know the only reason that your body is warm is because you are in it. When you leave this body, the body will go cold. So your energy, if you want to sense the deep, deep, deep you, you are warm. Arms over your head and flex your toes back. Inhale, sit up, exhale, exhale, and spin around. Come and stand on your knees. Your atmosphere is warm. Open your knees as wide as you can. Keep your heels at six. Hips and tummy, thighs forward. Lift your chest up. Drop your head back. Support your spine. Push your hips over your knees hard. Get your bum to work. Push it. Lift your chest up. That's the form in your back. As if somebody's got their hands underneath your heart, behind your heart, and they're pushing that bit up. And they're pushing that to the surface and your head is just rolling down the other side of the mountain away from it. And that is opening up the throat, your throat chakra. So your heart is teaching your throat to open. Hips and dummy, thighs forward, fabulous Chrissy. If you can reach down and grab your heels, then do. And when you grab your heels, very, very good, Barbie. Keep on rolling forward. Yes, Ma, yes, Billy. Hips, tummy, thighs forward. It's normal to come out. Whenever you want to come out, you do. Hips and tummy, thighs forward. And then you lay down. And then you lay down to flat line. Hips and tummy thighs forward, lift your chest up, you roll forward a little bit more. If you've grabbed your heels, put your hands back to your hips now. And very slowly in your own time, turn around and lay your beautiful body flat. And let go. A conscious person like the High Lord Buddha has gained will. The High Lord Buddha would never be tripped up by anger or irritation. He gained his will to overcome those urges that push from the matrix to lock, keep the prison you're locked in, closed. That is self-awakening. And you have will. But most people, if you tell them they don't have will, they're going to get so angry with you, especially the clever they think you are, they think they are. Arms over your head and flex your toes back. Inhale, sit up, exhale, exhale. Because they don't see their mood tossed to one side with each different thought that comes into their head or group of thoughts. Come to the back of your mat and sit on your knees and sit on your heels and reach around and grab your heels from behind. And get your chin down into your throat and suck your tummy around over and get your forehead on your knee and lift your hips up into the air as you roll over. And when Bhagwan Shreesh Rajneesh said, said in his book, Notes of a Madman, that there is only one book on the planet worth reading. And that's how I was introduced to, to, my, to my teacher, Mr. Gurdjieff, because I thought, okay, I'm going to get that book. I'm going to read that book because I'm on the planet. I can do it. Roll forward, roll forward, lift your hips up, keep rolling, open your spine. You roll, roll forward, roll forward. One more breath and change. And the reason he was saying it's the most important thing to read on the planet is because 
it was written by a conscious man, by a man who had will and a man who is awake like the High Lord Buddha. That's what he meant. And that's why this book is so unusual because it's pulling something else out of you to read it. It's not allowing, it's not your ordinary every day, oh, I can read this. That's not what it's asking to read it. Arms over your head and flex your toes back. Inhale, sit up. Exhale, exhale. And spin around. And come to the back of your mat and sit your knees and heels. Your knees, they touch. Your heels, they touch. Get your chin down into your throat. Chin down, suck in your tummy. And roll over. And lift your hips up into the air. And shuffle your knees forward toward your forehead. As you roll over, keep lifting your hips up, shuffle your knees forward. You roll over, you roll over a little bit more. You roll one more breath and change and turn around and lay down and let go and breathe. Melt into the ground. Let go. I think the reason I read it is because I wasn't deeply educated. I left school like 17 to go off and be a model. So I wasn't conditioned to an education system in, in the deep way. And so I just read one word at a time. That's what I did, gave myself the job to do. Just read one word after the other. When I saw how to do it, I okay. Just read one word after the other. That's all you do. Arms over your head and flex your toes back. Inhale, sit up. Exhale, exhale and spin around. Now would you kick your right leg out in the right hand corner of the space and get your left leg into your groin. And inhale up and turn and face your outstretched leg. I'm sure if I'd gone to college or university that I would have really learned of another way to read and I would have applied that way of reading to this book and it wouldn't have worked. I think that's why I was able to read it. Pull your toes back, get forward on your knee and I've never ever met anybody ever who's read it. Pull your toes back, slide your heel away and I've been in two mystery schools, guys. I've never met anybody who's read it. I just think they were too educated to read it. As you pull your toes back, dig your elbows into the ground and then lift your heels up off the floor at the end and change. Left leg out and right leg in and inhale up and turn. The first school was a Mr. Uspensky school who was the student of Mr. Gurdjieff. I never knew, the, I never found the Gurdjieff school until later because you have to find them and you have to find them out of thin air. How do you find a mystery school? You find them out of thin air. So I went to the, the Uspensky school seven years, never met a single soul in there that read the book. Lift your heel up at the end and change. Now feet together, lay down, inhale, sit up, exhale, exhale. And grab your big toe, your first and second finger, do the walk back business on your bum, walk back, walk back, walk back. And then luckily I bumped into a Gurdjieff school. And so I went to the Gurdjieff school, walk back, walk back, grab your toes, walk back, walk back. Same thing. Not one person was in there, read the book. I was like, right. No, I just was like, just quiet, really. I'm, I was looking for somebody so I could discuss it with them. Keep on pulling, length forward, length and forward. And when your legs are straight, get your elbows into the ground. And then lift your heels up, off the floor, at the end and change and turn around and lay down and let go and breathe. So if anybody ever wants to attempt to do it and Katya's already on the path, Katya's actually, she's actually bit the bullet. Arms over your head, flex your toes back. Inhale, breathing, please sit up, exhale, exhale and spin around. And you know guys, what happened to Katya was, I told a story in the room, bend your right leg under, uh, left leg out and right leg in is, where are we? Left leg out, right leg in, inhale up, turn. Place your outstretched leg round over, get a grip of the foot and work on the foot, pull the toes back. You all know what you're doing. So I told a little story in class and this story was exactly from the book. It's from a part of the book. And it was a story about the moon. As you pull your toes back, dig your elbows into the ground. If you were in this, at the class at the time, you'll remember a little bit the story and lift your heels up off the floor at the end and change. And now left leg out and right leg in and inhale up and turn and face the outstretched leg. And then Katia sent me a little text afterward and she's so sweet. I don't want to disturb you. She's such a little sweetheart and get you forward on your knee. But then she showed me, she took a photograph of the book that she's reading, this book. And she is at exactly the same spot as where I discussed it in this class, the synchronicity, because the book is huge, it's thick. That for her to be in that exact same spot, the synchronicity was outrageous. Lift your heel up off the floor at the end. And change feet together lay down that's because this book is alive in your breathing sit up exhale exhale and grab your big toe your first and second finger and do the walk back business they caught this book is an, an objective work of art 
An objective work of art means that you're not looking at it from your point of view. It is an objective point of view for the higher being's objective look as you pull forward. You would call um, the Mona Lisa an objective work of art. That's why it's got this effect on people because it's a living. Pull your toes back, dig your elbows into the ground, and lift your heels up off the floor at the end and change and turn around and lay down and let go and breathe. The chapel, um, Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo, the whole thing is an objective work of art. Arms over your head, flex your toes back. Rumi is an objective work of art. Inhale, breathing, sit up, exhale, exhale. It means it's got no agenda, it's just from the truth. Just the truth, pure and simple. Please bend your left leg underneath you and do not sit on your left heel. Pick up your right foot and cross it over the corner of your left knee joint. Lift up your left arm over the knee, push the knee out of the way, then grab the lower knee, lengthen your spine, and you begin to twist. So what I realized was that I went to another college, another university, and that was what, this is what I have been learning. As you lengthen your spine, you twist a little bit more, and you keep on twisting. Middle spine twist, upper spine twist, lower spine twist, total spine twisting like a pearl necklace. And change. And other side. You see, there's one education, you know, right leg underneath, you pick up the left, cross it over the corner, right knee joint, right arm up over the knee, push the other way, grab the low knee, lengthen, and begin to twist. Because actually, guys, what I've come to understand in hindsight, looking back and everything, is the education that you give yourself, which is very important. Not just the standard educa education that you give everybody. It's the edu how you educate yourself. And you twist a little bit more. Shoulders away from your ears. And you're twisting. Each one of you is going through a different room to find a deeper education for your spiritual growth as you twist, 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 and change. And turn around and lay down and let go and breathe. And let go. And in nearly 40 years, Katia, you're the only person that has ever had that connection with me with the book. In all those times. Arms over your head, flex your toes back. Inhale, sit up, exhale, exhale. I got goosebumps because I knew that the book had called you. Turn around and sit your knees and heels. All you've got to do, guys, is read one word at, word at a time and get the most original copy and run it by me if you want to know if it's a good enough copy for you. Inhale, breathing, and let go for it. Snap your tummies in and blow. And keep on blowing. Your spine is straight. And your tummies are in, and you keep on blowing, 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 blowing. You're here for a purpose, not just random. You're here for a purpose. You choose yourself. You choose yourself. You choose your own education. You choose the truth. Choose yourself, guys. You are made of light. You are a sacred being. Choose you. Three, two, one. Swallow a couple of times. Inhale, breathing. And let's go for it. Snap your tummy in and blow, 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 blow. Spine is straight. Keep on blowing. Tummy in, 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 in. Five, six, 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 six. And you breathe. Keep on blowing. And then tune it out. Five, four, three, two, one. Boom. And turn around and lay down and let go and breathe and let go and breathe. The raw material that we all have in our essence, my raw material, my leaning towards the spiritual world, which we all do, you know, it goes to the crystals, it went to different things, you know, all the things. Once I read that book, everything changed. Every single thing changed. My point of view was shifted into a new way of perceiving myself and the world. And I thank Mr. Gurdjieff with all of my being. Learn to love yourselves, guys. You are incredible. And wherever you go, leave those footprints of light and love 
You are all divine beings. You are walking, stepping your foot out onto a step that isn't there. Love this being that you are. That is the beginning. Love this being. Namaste, my beloveds, and wherever you go, leave your footprints of kindness, one heart, one love, and you know we are the one race, the human race, mankind. Ja, Rastafari. Namaste, my beloveds, I love.